So let's continue on a little more with the basic agency relationship and talk about the disclosure of the duties. <laughs> he said duty <laughs> to our client. All right. <clears throat> Told you, dude, I'm not right. So the authority that you hold is conferred to you or given to you in one of two methods. Express authority, or you hear it often called express agency. Sometimes some states use actual agency. And this is usually declared in very clear, precise, and defined terms. Believe it or not, it can be oral. We, under real estate, use what's called the statute of frauds, so that express has to be given in writing. We call that like the listing agreement, duh, and the buyer's agency agreement. That is the actual express agency that gets conferred to us through one of those written documents that we use. Now, there is a second type of agency. It is called implied authority or apparent. And apparent kind of makes more sense for some people to understand because this authority is actually conferred by customs or by activities carried out by the parties without any express authority being given. So if you have a buyer and they want to go show a house or see a house and you take them to go sh show the house and you do not have them sign the buyer's agency agreement, you are actually still their agent, but you are working under implied agency because it has been conferred to you by the activities that you are engaged in, i.e. showing the house. You have created agency, which means you still owe them all of the obligations and responsibilities of agency, but it wasn't really clearly defined by both parties. And what that actually is a left-handed version comment of saying, <laughs> they may not owe loyalty to you. You still have our legal obligations because we work under a code of ethics that says, I have loyalty to you, I have disclosure, and we're going to talk about them. But they may not with you. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about because you've experienced it, right? You ever had a buyer that you went and showed properties to and the next weekend, ta-da, you were busy watching the football game and they went with another friend of theirs. And for those of you at home, I'm using the finger quotes here, friend of theirs to see a house. And that guy wrote an offer and now you're over here going, what well, dude, what happened? You were my client. Well, yeah, but it was implied it wasn't express. They went out, found somebody else, and are now using them. And that person wrote the offer, or that agent wrote the offer. And you're sitting around here going, dude, I just lost a commission. Well, potentially, you know, <clears throat> and we're not going to get into procuring cause today. If you have any questions about that, we can, there's a whole course I teach on procuring cause. Yeah, believe it or not, <laughs> there's actually a two hour course that defines what that is. If you do not understand the term procuring cause, as you hear it come out of my mouth, you probably need to go talk to somebody uh, that's a little more experienced to get some insight on that. Okay. So we've mentioned this fiduciary obligations that you owe to your client. When you create this agency, there are certain obligations that you owe to them. This is where the divergence happens between all of the agencies. So the mentioned earlier, the general setup is 
principal agent has an agency relationship. Sports agency, talent agency, modeling agency, real estate agency. Where these start to differ is right here. What are the fiduciary obligations of the agent that is owed to their principal? I am going to talk about six of them that is required by real estate agency because I don't know what the sports agency obligations are. I don't know what the modeling agency obligations are. That's for their industry, not ours. So when we become an agent of the seller or the buyer, either intentionally or unintentionally, let me rephrase that, either expressly or implied, we are still held by the laws that we owe certain specific obligations to our principal to make sure that they do not get harmed, that they don't get cheated, misled, all of that. And we have six of them, all right? <clears throat> the specific duties loyalty i have written first here there is no hierarchy i wrote loyalty first can be any of them because they are all are all equally required the duty of loyalty is the most fundamental one that's why i put it first it is the most fundamental of all of our fiduciary duties because it obligates us at all times to only think about what is the best interest for the client, our principal, and doesn't really take into consideration our own interests. All right. That is probably the fundamental one. What is best for my client? Not what is best for me. Confidentiality. We are obligated to safeguard our principal's confidence, their information, their secrets, all of these items that a client tells us, we need to keep in confidence, all right? Because some of this information potentially could harm our principal's ability to negotiate, right? If you knew that you were listing a house for sale and your client came to you and said, look, I want to sell my house. I've lost my job. My wife's having an affair. My teenage daughter's pregnant and my cat's on heroin. <laughs> yeah, I said that. Um, that is something that could potentially harm their ability to negotiate. So that it was told to you in confidence, you need to make sure that you keep it in confidence. Another obligation is disclosure. We are obligated to disclose to our principal all relevant and material information that the agent knows to be true that pertains within the scope of this deal. Now there's a couple words here that I all the time get one is that the agent knows to be true all right if you don't know it to be true I'm certainly not saying that you can't maybe mention it but I think you should put qualifiers on it and what I mean by that is you might tell your buyer hey dude that house is really beautiful it's a good house but I have heard that Walmart's going to build across the street I don't know that to be true. We might want to look into it. That's what I'm saying right there. Put some qualifiers. You don't say Walmart's building there. Don't buy that because you don't know that to be true. Obedience. You are <clears throat> obligated to obey your client's lawful instructions. Lawful instructions. Do not, or you are not required, obviously, to obey if your client tells you, look, dude, I want you to list this house for sale, but don't tell anybody about the lead-based paint that's all over the house. Man, I can't do that. 
That's a federal law. We got to disclose lead-based paint. I had a client several years ago that literally told me, they said, hey, look, <clears throat> my wife and I don't use electricity from sundown on Friday to sun up on Monday. See that look you're giving me? That's the look I probably gave him. Okay. If that's your choice. He said, yeah, we don't watch TV. We don't do email. We don't. Uh, at this time, there was faxes. We don't take faxes, use the phone, any of that. I'm like, okay. He's like, so if we get an offer this weekend, do not send it to me till Monday morning. Now, in that particular case, I actually said, hey, that's cool. Can you send me an email that says that? And he's like, yeah, sure. Because I just wanted to make sure that I had some backup in case some other agent said, oh, I just sent you an offer. Well, sorry, I can't turn it in. What do you mean you can't turn it in? My client said not to. That was a lawful instruction. Does it border on weird? Sure. But hey, who am I to judge? <clears throat> care. You are to exercise reasonable skill and care to make sure that your client doesn't get harmed. You are expected to know where the pitfalls are and what to look for. Therefore, that's why they've hired you. It is your job to exercise reasonable skill and care. Now, what that means is you are not an environmental engineer. You are not an accountant. You're not an attorney, unless you are an attorney. And then if you are, I'll slow down so you can keep up with me. All right. <laughs> because your job might be the whole extent of your representation may be. Hey, dude, I don't remember what methyl ethyl death was, but we talked about that in school, real estate school. We should call an environmental engineer. That's it. I've exercised reasonable skill and care. I told him that, hey, I remember that word being a problem, but I'm not an environmental engineer, so I'm not going to give him remediation advice, but I am going to tell him, seek outside help. Hey, I remember this whole thing about a 1031 exchange with investment property. I really don't understand all of it, but I do know that you can in some way avoid paying uh, capital gains tax. I think you probably should call an accountant. That, my friends, is an example of exercising reasonable skill and care. I didn't give him advice about a 1031. I just know there is such a thing. And I directed him to get some more advice. Then the last one that we have is this thing called accounting. It is, our account, it is our obligation to account for all the money and property, whether real or personal, that comes into our possession, like earnest money is the most notable one. We have that relationship and that authority. So what you have are six fiduciary obligations, and they spell out, if you rearrange these, as cold AC, care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and confidentiality. Now, when we create the agency, whether it's implied or express, care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure are all accounting and uh, what was the one I missed? Confidentiality. I guess I could just look behind me on the big overhead screen. Yeah, those six <laughs> are actually created at the beginning of agency. All right, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Those six are created. They are conferred to us. They are what define our agency. And we have those six fiduciary obligations, either in the express or the implied version, until agency gets terminated and we're going to talk later how to terminate agency but once we start it this is how these are the six that we get 
Now, when the agency terminates, we still maintain two of these that survive the termination of agency and they exist in perpetuity. Accounting and confidentiality. Accounting and confidentiality actually survive the termination of agency. Now, it is possible that confidentiality can also terminate. And what I mean by this is, let's go back to the example that you guys all laughed at. Seller tells you, I lost my job, I'm getting a divorce, my teenage daughter's pregnant, my dog run away from home, my cat's on heroin, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Guy's having a bad week. He tells you this in confidence. You are not allowed to use this against him later. Even after you lose the listing, you can't go find a buyer and go, hey, dude, uh, I know this about this dude over here. I'm not listing his house anymore, so screw him. Let's go make an offer because he's desperate. No, you cannot use the confidentiality unless that information becomes publicly known. So let's say the divorce is in the paper, goes through. There's a job posting, or there's a newspaper article that talks about the uh, factory closing and everybody loses is going to lose their job in the city. Now it's publicly known. You can also lose confidentiality or the requirement or the obligation if the principal guides you to it. Hey, you know what? Go ahead and tell everybody because I really need to bring an offer in. Yes, I'm losing my job and getting divorced. If somebody asks, tell them. Or there's a court action, which I've never really seen, that requires us to disclose. All right? So these two, accounting and confidentiality, you keep in perpetuity. Now, a managing broker needs to develop the basic company written office policies that identifies and describes the agency relationship between the client and the licensee. The example that I give all the time, if most of you have ever come to my classes before, is that we, you and I, could talk about a positive power coefficient on a nuclear reactor all day. If you don't know who I am, I actually have advanced degrees in nuclear engineering, undergrad Texas A&M, graduate school and PhDs at Purdue, all right? We could talk about a positive power coefficient all day. What's the big problem with that? Well, the biggest problem is you really don't care. <laughs> The big problem is you don't understand what a positive power coefficient is. I literally would have to explain what it is to you, then we could talk about it. Agency is the same concept. Most of us, because we deal in this business, understand what agency is. If you're new, maybe you're a little fuzzy on it. If you've been here 25 years, then you do get it. But a client may not, or a client may think he does, so we have this thing in Indiana, other states have the exact same concept that is called the written office policy. And it's the requirement of the managing broker to create this written office policy, which explains what agency is. Hey, Mr. Client, here's what agency is. Here's what listing. I represent you. I'm going to market the property. I have all these fiduciary obligations, blah, 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 blah. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And that seller signs the written agreement so that they know what agency is. Now they can sign the listing agreement to confer agency to you because technically they can't really sign an agency agreement if they don't know what it is. So at the beginning of the agency relationship, you need the principal 
to sign this broker's written office policy explaining what and disclosing what the agency is and what it means to the principal and what their obligations are and what our loyalties and duties and obedience and confidentiality and accounting and all of our fiduciary responsibilities are to them. And once they understand that agency, then and only then can they sign the express agency that we call a listing agreement or a buyer's agency agreement. All right. Let's go.